Aloha. Happy Friday. This is Kaui Lucas with Hawaii is my mainland on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm here every Friday at 3 o'clock. This week, I have Senator Will Espero here, and I had hoped to have another guest. Um, I call him the apothecary. He's someone who for the last four years has been really dedicating himself to learning how to make um, medicine out of marijuana. And a few weeks ago, Senator Espero was part of a think tech panel at Richardson Law School and spoke so eloquently um, to this issue that um, I wanted to have him come down and, and interact directly with the apothecary. But um, it didn't work out. We have his um, questions for Will written down, but he was simply too afraid that, um, actually his clients, his clients were too afraid that, that, that he would be arrested and put it out of business and they wouldn't get their medicine anymore. So maybe next year Will and I will be here and, and that won't be the case. Um, so to give us a, a sort of general overview of where we are now, the law passed this summer, and in January things are going to start pumping. Yes. It's taken us 15 years to get here. As you know, in 2000, we did pass the medical marijuana legislation. That was actually my first legislative session. And wow. Unfortunately, we were a leader back then, and it took us 15 years to get here, and many states did much more. However, um, thank goodness we are at this point. Uh, we did pass the dispensary bill, which means that in January, the Department of Health uh, will be putting out its interim rules that they'll be able to uh, implement for two years. and. We'll be having applications for eight licenses statewide, three on Oahu, two on Maui and the Big Island, and one on Kauai. And these licenses uh, will give uh, the applicant, the licensee, the opportunity to have a vertical where he or she where they can grow, manufacture, and distribute or retail the medical marijuana. And this is just the beginning. Yeah, you said two years. What, what is that two-year? Well, the interim rules are uh, the rules that the Department of Health, uh, we're allowing them to come up with the rules, the plan, uh, to get the medical marijuana program up and running. Uh, because if we went through the regular rulemaking process, it would take much longer than the um, abbreviated time that we have allowed in the law so we can already be having distribution in July of 2016. So the Department of Health is putting together the rules to run the program. We don't know what those rules are. You've got the state law which we passed, HB 321, and that is the framework, uh, the, the backbone of the program. But specific little details that they need to um, tweak or look at or make the program itself run, uh, they're able to put together the rules. We're not having public hearings on those rules. They're not going to be vetted by uh, others. Uh, basically, we've given them carte blanche to come up with the rules to work on selection and implementing the program. So after, after two years, is, is, is there be, will there be another opportunity to, to go back and, and tweak or change? The, is, that, Correct. is that the idea? Correct. Because um, Correct. the apothecary was, um, the, as you know, this show is about you know, keeping it local. So there's a really big fear in, in the community, in the medical cannabis community, that this vertical integration that you mentioned, the vertical operations, where one licensee does everything from top to bottom, is going to cut out the small guys. Okay, and, and that's, a, that's a valid concern, but uh, you have to remember that this bill was a compromise. Uh, we had tried many years to try to get something passed, and we were not successful. Uh, I and many others want to 
have a horizontal system. And that would allow someone to apply to get a grow license or a manufacturer license or a retail. But this is just the initial, we're in our infancy, getting the program up and running. And there was a lot of give and take. So um, in 2017, the Department of Health will have an opportunity to expand the program according to the bill. Uh, 2017. 2017. And in that time, they can go as far as having dispensaries based on, a, according to the bill, 1 to 500 ratio. 1 to 500? Patients. Okay. Okay. And so uh, there's a give and take. And although these interim rules are the rules that the Department of Health are putting together, that doesn't mean we can't make changes via the state legislature. And how, uh, so in how other words, easy is that? <laughs> well, it, right now we have a pilot program. And the question is, do we have to tweak the bill or can we start discussing other issues and, and get the, the discussion and conversation going? Does the Department of Attitude, in, as far as uh, changes that they, they could make? So yes. They do. The, okay, right so. now, the Department of Health controls the program. Uh, if you saw the bill, that mandates certain things to get the program running. But in terms of all other details or issues where necessary, if they need to put them in the rules, they have the latitude to put them in the rules without any public hearings at their discretion. So specifically, let's go to um, the caretaker um, issue. Okay, that's in the statute. So they can't change that. And what that says is in 2018, there will no longer be caretakers. Um, that was a compromise. And the reason why that was put in is that um, some legislators felt that once we have a system that is up and running, like a retail establishment where someone can just go show their card and purchase, then there may not necessarily be the need for a caretaker helping a person grow. Now, a person can still grow according to the bill in law. So the, my understanding of that is, and I'd, I'd like to read what the apothecary said ab about that, because I thought he made some, you know, as, as somebody who's in the trenches working with, with critically ill people, um, he has to um, look at um, how, how do I best serve these people. So the way he works is that he tells them to go and do the research. He's not a doctor. And they come to him and say, okay, I've done the research. This is what I need. And then this guy goes out and makes it. So he says, there are a few of us that have taken the time and expense to learn how to grow and make medicine for various conditions. With the vertical operation, locals are cut out and only a handful of wealthy investors will control those dispensaries. Um, Pam Lichty of the Drug Policy Forum said they will be the Walmart and driving local growers and manufacturers out of business. What is needed is for caregivers who have, who have more than one patient. Right now, you can only have one. Um, since it is not cost effective to grow for just one, it takes many months to grow a plant and hours to turn it into medicine. The caregivers should be able to exchange products among themselves, like they do in the California model, where dispensaries can buy up to 25% from another grower. And just to let you know, I completely agree with him. But this is about passing legislation. There's 76 legislators. There's two bodies. There's the governor. There's the Department of Health. And unfortunately, we have to compromise at times. And that's what's here. Policy is policy, whatever the legislature. So I agree with him. I think there should be more plants. I believe there should be more, uh, more ounces available. I believe a caregiver. But we need to pass those via state law. And at this point in time, we took a huge, huge step by passing the dispensary law. And now, I would like to make those changes that uh, your ap ap apothecary. <laughs> apothecary suggested, no doubt. 
but it's going to take advocacy. It's going to take lobbying. People can't be hiding. They're going to have to come out. You're going to have to talk to your legislator. You're going to have to have an organization. You're going to have to have an industry. We are, we have created a new industry for this state. And there are individuals who are already trying to organize and have um, uh, be the voice for this industry. And if you want something just like anything else, then we need to lobby and advocate. I would like to change that so we don't remove the caregiver. But until then, uh, we will at least have a dispensary system in place. And we could change the law in 2016. We can change the law in 2017. We could change the law any time. But it's going to take a legislative effort, which means the bill is going to have to be introduced. We go in from January to May, and we try to make the necessary changes to, to make it work. Are you um, working on new legislation? No. Yes, right. Yes. You are? OK. Well, that sounds positive. Um, would you be willing to advocate for, for such a system that would allow um, caregivers to, to have more people um, under their care, more than just one? To well, no, there have been bills like that in the past, and they just haven't passed. So, do, you, do you know why? Well, in the legislature, uh, committee chairmen have great power. In other words, one chairperson can kill a bill. Okay. And if you don't have the right chair supporting your cause, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, is not good. So what committee is responsible for this Health. sort of thing? Health and WAM are the key committees. Okay. And if you can get the chairs, then at that point in time, you've gotten 75% of the battle. But you also have to get the majority of both houses to support in a final vote. And so in this case, we were able to get all the players. We had an epiphany. <laughs> we hit the <laughs> age of Aquarius. <laughs> and you know, now we're literally, you know, people talk about, well, what's the next step? Decriminalization, legalization, possible. But the first step really is getting this dispensary system up and off the ground. Well, Let's I'm not jump too far ahead. We need to see and make certain that the way it's set up, we can grow it, we can manufacture it, and we can dispense it. And for people that say, well, it's keeping the locals out, it's not keeping the locals out. Uh, first of all, this is big business. You, you can't, the only reason why people are saying it's keeping the locals out I think is because of the one point two million dollar well, issue. Um, the apothecary did um, did a, his his real job. <laughs> it's in the finance industry, right? Um, so he did a he did a workup on it, and he said that using the the, the legislation as it was put forward, what you have to do, um, uh, although the license allows for two retails, the price, including um, a cash flow, all of that stuff, um, for a license with only one retail operation was $5 million. So if you're, if you're a prudent business person working on your business plan and you're, you're looking at doing an operation like this um, and having to come up with $5 million, there, I mean, I could be wrong, but it, I, it just doesn't seem like... And, and in the, at the Richardson School, do you remember how many people there were from out of state, from the continent, who were there were, were there to find out what was going on because they were interested in building businesses? Well, sure, but this is the United States of America. Okay, we're not precluded from going to Colorado and setting up. We're not precluded from going to Washington. Why should we say, you from the mainland, we don't want you? We're not saying that, and we never should. This is the United States of America. Actually, we said, these businesses must be 51% owned. Okay, 51, and we could revisit, but 51%, 51 but that owned, doesn't, that's owned the, by local people. Okay. But that doesn't necessarily mean it won't be 100% owned. That's a business decision a person has to make, and let's revisit that. Okay, okay. okay. we'll be right back in a minute. 
Aloha, my name is Justina Spiritu and I'm the co-host of Hawaii Farmers Series. This is my co-host, Matthew Johnson, and you can catch us every Thursday at 4 p.m. at thinktechhawaii.com. What do we talk about, Matt? So on Hawaii Farmers Series, we're going to be bringing on the farmers and also supporter of farmers, including restaurants, caterers, as well as government supporters and nonprofits to hear their background stories and understanding our local ag community just a little bit better. Yeah, essentially there's a lot more that goes into farming and the local food community beyond just producing the food. And we want to feature and get the background story on all these folks and see how we all work together as a community. So join us every Thursday. Aloha. Aloha, this is Kaui Lucas with Hawaii is my mainland. We're back. I have Senator Will Espero here with me today and we're talking about the new medical marijuana dispensary law that finally got passed this past year and what's that going to look like in the trenches for for people in Hawaii who who use it and who want to be in the business of it so while we were away we got a um, a tweet uh, um, Senator Sproul can you uh, answer that it says can patients waiting for their uh, Department of Health MMJ cards get a temporary permit to use their medicine? Just a quick answer. And the answer to that is no. Okay. The Department of Health, uh, with the advice from the Attorney General, they're being hard-headed. And I completely disagree with their thinking and rationale, but they're implementing it. They're going to be having an online system real soon, and they're hoping that the wait time from when the doctor puts in the uh, certification to actually receiving the card uh, might be uh, a couple weeks. But um, at this stage, th the answer to that question is no temporary cards. And I disagree with that. Okay. okay. So back to the business. Yeah, no, and, and your person mentioned $5 million. Mm -hmm. There is no $5 million requirement. Uh, the uh, bill is specific 1.2 million. Right. And the reason for that is that we want, because this is a very limited uh, number of applicants, we want success. We don't want failure. And a key part of that business plan is having the resources to implement the plan. Okay, the 1.2 million will go towards growth sites. It will go towards uh, the retail. It will go towards whatever it is, takes. Um, I visited Washington and Colorado this summer, and I am told that to get one of these dispensary system, vertical systems, and running could could cost anywhere from two to five million. It's possible that these dispensaries may not make a profit the first year. It's possible. I can tell you come July 2016, no one will be up and running 100%. It's just not going to be possible because the licenses will be um, given or announced April 15th. That only gives the applicant three months. <laughs> Which, unless they're already starting their plans at that point. Uh... Well, they'll, they will be able to get product because for starters there will be there are growers out there the caregivers the patients so you can go and get product from them whether it's a small plant or a mature plant um, we're not yet sure whether the interim rules are going to address how they're going to get their initial plants in other states that issue has been silent and or government has looked the other way <laughs> But uh, with that said, we do expect that there's going to be a short turnaround. People are going to have product come July, but it's, they're, going to, they're going to have to ramp up because so, each production site can grow up to 3,000 plants. Okay, so the, um, what I heard you said, just for clarity, is that in, initially they will be able to source uh, product um, elsewhere that didn't grow on their designated um, site? Well, the site. law is silent. This is those interim rules and okay. where do we get there? Just like when we passed the bill in 2000, 
Nobody said, where can I get a seed? Where can I get a plant? That, the law was silent. The law is silent, too, on the initial crops and plants and seeds. The Department of Health can put that process in the interim rules that I was talking with you earlier. Or the law could be silent again. But there's going to be a point in time, uh, a key component of the legislation is the, the seed to sale monitoring and oversight. So at a certain point in time, we're going to want to um, know where every seed comes from, where every plant is, every plant's going to have to be labeled, and just follow that plant from seed to sale from beginning to end. That's the ultimate um, system. But initial plants, right now, I, I don't have an answer for you, but at the very least, people will be able to go to patients, if you know patients, caregivers, and get plants. But we don't expect anyone to start with 3,000 seeds. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> the, um, I, I'm seeing that this is being done very conservatively. Very conservatively, because it and took us 15 years to get here. Okay. So, I'm, I'm contrasting that with my memory of the, the Richardson panel, where we had Jerry Sugano talking about what she had to go, she has to go through to get the appropriate medicine for, for her child. Yes. And I, it's, it's, it's really hard to, to square that where, um, well, in her, in her case, I, I do understand that for, for children, if, if the patient is a minor, you will still be able to uh, have a care, they were, ha have caregivers. So, so that's it. But um, in general, it sounds like that you, we're going to be limited to what those folks who have got the licenses are, are putting on, on the market. Well, here, here's another perspective. Right now, the law says 2018, no more caregivers that can grow, right? Okay. I would like to change that if we can. Okay. And we'll, we'll, we'll try. We'll work on it. If we don't change that, a patient can still grow. A registered patient can still grow. And let's leave it at that. Okay. A, a registered patient can still grow. Okay. Oh. Now, if that registered patient needs assistance, somebody can say, well, you should water there. You should fertilize there. Yeah. Okay, that, there's nothing that says you can't get advice okay. as I read the law or interpret the law. All the law says, caregivers, registered caregivers will not be able to grow. But that does not stop you as a patient from growing. Okay. Does that make sense? Um, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I understand what you're saying. Right. So one of the, one of the um, uh, other concerns is uh, oh, uh, in the being careful because it is medicine. Correct. And I read that, they, that the growers will have to have their uh, product tested at a lab in the same county. Now, who's building that lab? Okay, well, um, that's again a discussion where the law is fairly general and through the interim rules there can be clarity or we can make changes. But um, there's talks now because we knew that it wasn't addressed with significant detail uh -huh. that, uh, for example, uh, I don't know if someone's going to be able to invest half a million dollars plus in a lab on Kauai and make a profit. So it's possible that there could be mobile labs. That's one option. Inter-island mobile labs? Yes. Flying labs? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've spoken with somebody who said, we can take equipment and bring it and test. And put it on a plane. 
Yes. Yes. Okay. So w as as it was contemplated. Yes. Um, w how was it thought that it would? It, it's not the same people who have the licenses. It has Correct. to be a, a the, third the, party. And and it's just from a uh, intent. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have medicine. We want to make sure the medicine is safe and Absolutely. of a great quality. Got so it. that's why you have labs. Right. We will have independent labs, and the Department of Health may certify those labs. It doesn't have to, it may, but it will set basic standards. So they're visiting other states and jurisdictions. They're looking at best practices. And I have faith that whatever they come up with will be a system that, that will work. Okay. Um, but a component of our dispensary system will be independent labs, testing for bacteria, testing for mold, maybe testing for pesticides. And we will see what those rules look like come January. Okay, so not until January. We we, we really don't know on the on the lab scene what. So right. is it? It's possible that everything else could happen, but if there was no lab, that the the operations couldn't. Could I think though, there will be labs. The question is, is what exactly will the labs do, and 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 how much will be mandated versus. Um, May. Okay. 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 Um, but yeah. uh, this is an area that actually there is still discussion going on. Um, it's possible you can have a, a lab today who does testing and other things in other areas in other industries could just test for marijuana. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Th there's nothing that says the lab will only test marijuana. I am I assuming right now. There are tests going on on certain things that we're eating or or that people right. are, are working with, right? Right. So right. it's just okay. a matter of so having an individual who is properly trained and educated that knows what they're doing and looking for whatever they're looking for. That looks like <laughs> a business opportunity that may not be as expensive in, in part of this uh, burgeoning Well, it depends economy. because the laboratory I visited like I said, they had five or six, four or five, six pieces of equipment. Each one cost in excess of $100,000. Okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> now we're back to big business. And um, I just wanted to put that, that $5 million f figure, that was really looking at, at um, being a robust um, business that could stand the, the uncertainties of the, the first couple of years. Right. But again, so there's, there's none. But the law itself doesn't mention $5 million. Right. I mean, that's okay. just somebody's opinion. Okay, but, in, but... Informed opinion. But you don't want us to put $5 million in the law. Absolutely not. That would I'm even just <laughs> talking about the reality of the trenches. I understand you are dealing with the legislation and you're dealing with policy yeah. and I'm I'm talking about the little guys you know who are but trying there to is, but but I mean but just to bring that up goes against the concept of opening it up to more than just the little guy this is a business just like someone investing in a car dealership a service station a retail store you must have resources especially the fact that it's high security and you have multiple locations, you have to invest in a grow site, a production center that's enclosed, that it'll have a fence, that it'll have cameras, that'll, and then you have to invest in a, a dispensary retail location. This is not going to come cheap no. and the benefits or potential profits are are enormous. So, yes, people on the mainland are interested because this is America. <laughs> it's also medicine, though. So there aren't that many medical, medically um, necessary, mandated um, uh, procedures or products where the driving force is. I mean, it's all about setting it up as a business. I mean. We, we our, our hospitals, our, our 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 medicines. You know, there's there's more leeway there to allow things to be accessible for the patients who. No, need I, them. I I completely agree. Okay, 
All but right. because of the conservative factor, whatever that okay. means, and we've <laughs> had pushback from the police, we've had pushback from the prosecutors, we've had pushback from religious people. We have a democracy, we pass legislation that will work. Okay, well, we'll be right back after a minute to talk more with Will Asparo. Hi, I'm Jay Fidel. That's Ted Ralston. You know, Ted is the uh, host of uh, Where the Road Leads. It shows uh, every Friday from 4 to 5 p.m. It's about technology. It's about how people are collaborating and solve problems with modern technology. It's where the road leads. We all know that. We should all be listening. Join us there, 4 to 5 p.m. every Friday. Now, what about that do you agree with? All of it. I knew he'd say that. Aloha. Say aloha. Aloha. Good. Hi, my name is Cindy Matsuki, and I host High Growth with HTDC, where we talk about all things tech, innovation, entrepreneurship, and manufacturing, because there are tons of things that are happening in Hawaii in those fields, and we like to share them with you because people, more people should know about them. This show broadcasts live every other Tuesday at 3 o'clock on Think Tech Hawaii, and tune in, and we'll see you then. Thank you. Yep, we're at this stage. Okay. Yeah. I'm Kawi Lucas. This is Hawaii is my mainland. I'm speaking with Senator Willis Sparrow about the new cannabis uh, dispensaries. And um, we're having a great uh, time discussing this. Um, there's so many of these um, conversations that happen all over. There's a lot of, there's a lot of uncertainty as you've explained because the Department of Health is not going to come out with the rules until mid-January and until then. Early January. Early January. <clears throat> We're all just trying to figure it out. Um, you mentioned um, before we went to the break something about eating, <laughs> um, how, how things we eat get tested. And um, that reminds me to ask you uh, about um, edibles somehow they are not part of this although for people who actually do use it medicinally there there's a, a, a large right. portion of that that um, patient who really need edibles right and edibles will be coming later okay so uh, the bill does allow though for oils uh, lotions um, uh, tinctures things like that but Again, because of the opposition and the conservative element who are afraid that children will get into cookies and brownies and gummy bears, say, okay, in this first rollout, we'll address that later and we won't include how we're going to deal with gummy bears, brownies, and cookies. Okay, we'll look at gummy bears, brownies, and cookies at a later date. But those are important. Right now, what we want, though, is a dispensary system where someone can go buy primarily uh, marijuana that many people we know are buying on the black market and, and eventually uh, eliminate or minimize that black market and, and then just get, in essence, a pharmacy system for medical marijuana. And what we haven't even mentioned is just the fact that this is still a Schedule One drug, and we've got major issues at the federal level. But I, we won't get too much into that because uh, things, that's a whole other. Yeah, that's a whole you, new. You get to come yeah. back, and we'll do part two on that one. Right, but I believe that what we did with the dispensary bill is huge for the industry, and we don't know where it's going to take us. But I'm certain that things that are going to come forward, we will not have to wait another 15 years. Issues that we're already discussing um, might happen in two, three, four years. And if the trend of legalization continues, it's possible Hawaii can legalize within five to 10 years, which would make this whole discussion moot. Uh, because legalize, now, when you say legalize, legalization you mean of just marijuana. Period. Period. Like recreationally. Alaska, Washington, Colorado, 
and you know, I um, I actually have a, a, a map um, that um, maybe our our technical goddess uh, Zuri can put behind us. Okay, this is from National Geographic. It's the international version, which is why it's in German. <laughs> But it, um, it shows uh, where in the world um, the most use is, and the greenest parts that uh, are, are where the highest use is, and then um, around the world, th so these are places where it's legislated. And then, um, Zuri, could we have the second one, the one with the um, where, where it's legal? Uh, oops. Okay, well, well okay. we anyway. know that there's a discussion on legalization. Uh, Hawaii is not going to legalize anytime soon, okay? We just have legalized dispensaries, and we want to get that off the ground. Right. Uh, but the, my point of bringing that up is that uh, if we do get to that one day, then uh, the issues and concerns of everybody returning regarding growing, regarding manufacturing, uh, it'll be moot because it's legal. Just like, you know, people want to make donuts, you can make donuts. <laughs> <laughs> what, you said you went, you were able to travel um, to the operations in Washington and Colorado? Yes. What was that? Can you talk a little bit about that? What was that like? Well, I... I visited dispensaries and retail sites and a laboratory, and it was uh, as I expected, although um, you know there was no high security and hoodlums hanging around. I mean, these were storefront locations that that blended in with the rest of the town and community. So I think we're going to be fine. I don't think we're going to have any problems. and And it's really just a matter of of getting these up and running, uh, showing people that, uh, that the world will not collapse. Uh, when people said Obama was going to be president and suddenly you know, all's going to go to hell. <laughs> 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 uh, and actually, uh, what we're doing is improving upon our current medical marijuana program. We're improving upon it. And concerns about medical marijuana falling in the hands of our children. Of course, we're going to do everything we can so that does not happen. We're going to give uh, education and outreach, which is a, a component of the bill, mandating education and outreach. So people are aware and understand. But, you know, today, uh, anybody can get marijuana in any community they live on. And it's, it's so easy. But this will help our patients. This is a health care issue. Right. This is not law enforcement. This is a health care. And eventually, hopefully, the federal government will, will get it as well and follow suit with what another 23 states plus D.C. is doing. So that seems to be the basic disconnect, that, that there's the um, really treating it like a medicine and then, on the other hand, treating it like a, a, a criminal substance um, uh, or just a, uh, a business rather than just looking at it as something that people who are sick need safe, reliable access to. There is no other medicine today that is getting the attention and scrutiny as medical marijuana. Okay, okay if someone, uh, you know, oxycodone or oxycotton or methadone or whatever. If a patient gets a prescription, they can get it. You don't have to jump through hoops, get a card, go register with the Department of Health. It's actually ridiculous. But unfortunately, sometimes change comes slowly. But we're now at the point in time where this huge hurdle, we have overcome this huge hurdle now, as we implement next year, and people see that, okay, it's working, there's no major issues or problems, what else can we do to improve? And that's where these small changes and things we can do that will hopefully um, help the patients, help the caregivers, 
and, and even more people will get medical marijuana because now there is a safe way. They don't have to worry about growing it or going in the black market. They can get it just like going to a pharmacy. Okay, um, there was, um, uh, I don't want to get too far afield on that, but um, you, we, it, a big concern at that meeting at Richardson was the banking acts um, aspect. And I believe you answered some questions at the end uh, that there were some people here in Honolulu who seemed to be um, looking at ways to make that happen. Can you talk to that a little bit? Well, that's still uh, uh, an obstacle to, to overcome. Um, I don't have an answer uh, because of the federal banking laws and, and um, how other states are dealing with this. Until the federal government makes changes, it's going to be uh, difficult um, to, to tell a, a dispensary, you know, you're going to be okay. I expect credit unions might be one place that people can put their money. Um, some people will have to put their money in, in, in uh, safes. I saw a couple of safes. I was going to say, what Colorado, did they do in, in Colorado? Big safes. Um, I mean, I, I I'm not an expert on this side, but uh -huh. in Hawaii, buy real estate because <laughs> <laughs> you know you're going to get your profit back sooner or later. <laughs> but 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 seriously, uh, this is there is legislation today at the congressional level, and I do believe that at the federal level something will happen because so much money is involved. We're talking about, with 23 states, hundreds of millions, if not billions and billions of dollars. And the federal government is going to have to pass legislation to address the needs of, of the Business. residents and the states that have medical marijuana. It's, it's, a, it's an issue they cannot ignore, in my opinion. I even said, well, could we have a, 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 just a state depository? You know, that could be a, a place where someone can go just deposit literally their money in a big depository. And that discussion is still ongoing. Oh, well, it, so it's still happening. So that's, that's not a closed door. Well, anything is possible, but what <laughs> might happen, I don't have a clue right well, now. Well, I like the idea of, of the, the credit unions. That's another way for local businesses. Local credit unions could step up to the plate and, and make this service available, and that would help keep some of the money in Hawaii and, and, and build up local credit unions. Mm -hmm. Wow, there is so much to cover. There is, this is just a huge, huge um, topic. And uh, Senator Sparrow, I... I think we're going to definitely have to do a part two. I, I, I hear myself saying that <laughs> um, uh, often, but um, there's, there's so many things to look at. Maybe after the, um, the new rules come out in January, it would be a really uh, interesting thing to take a look at what they have actually put together with. Um, the Department of Health has come up with um, to make this uh, first year of legal um, dispensaries a success. Let me also just briefly mention that there's even discussions today. Right now, you cannot transport it inter-island. Uh, we're having discussions, and it came up at the Richardson uh, Law School uh, uh, discussion that, about possibly allowing inter-island transfer of medical marijuana, and that would help those individuals in rural areas. Uh, that would help uh, a, a one dispensary like Kauai if they had a problem and, with their and, crop. And M Maui County has three islands exactly. and only two dispensaries. How does that work? Right. Well, that's why we haven't taken away that a person can grow and a person can still have a caregiver. Okay. But this discussion is certainly fluid and ongoing. Thank you so much for joining me here on Hawaii is my mainland, and I'm really looking forward to having you back. Thank you. Thank you very much.